What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Taurus here and in today's video, as you saw by the title, we are playing with the new Disco Collection. This is the second time that Juvia's Place has collabed with Fumi and I was too excited. When Fumi did the very first collab with Juvia's Place, I fell in love with that palette, but it has since been sold out and discontinued. So when they did the second launch, I had to grab it and make sure I did a tutorial as quickly as possible. And as you all can see, she's bringing the blues without giving us the blues, honey. This collection is very bold, very bright, and it contains one eyeshadow palette as well as one gloss, and I'm wearing both on the face today. So if you would like to know how I achieved this look as well as these swatches of everything in the collection, just go ahead and continue to watch. Today, you guys, I am truly excited to play with this palette. Even though I must tell you, blues are not my favorite color. I absolutely love supporting Juvia's Place, and you all know I love supporting Fumi. She was the very first influencer I saw that actually used this brand on a regular basis. And so the idea of finishing off this week with her collab was no problem for me. I wanted to make sure I saved what I thought would be the best for last. Once again, I'm not the biggest fan of blues. But if Fumi tells me she's coming out with the collection, I don't care what brand it's with, I have to have it. And I'm not sure how many of you know this, even though I'm showing Fumi for the third collab of this week, she was not the third influencer to get a collab with Juvia's Place. She was actually the first. And that was when Fumi and Juvia's Place collaborated for the Queen palette. I still had mine from the very first launch. I believe since then they've done a relaunch on the Juvia's Place website. So I'm hoping that they will bring this palette back because it was absolutely beautiful. This was a palette that could be used on the face as well as the eyes. And many people love using these colors as blushes as well as highlighters. So I am someone who had to grab it not only to support Juvia's Place, but to be able to use this anywhere on the face. Because I'm telling you, I love using this one as a blush topper, this one as a highlight, and this one as a blush you could be up and out the door and know that all your colors are cohesive on the eyes as well as the face, got to have it. But today we're gonna to talk about Fumi's second collaboration and that is for this here. This is the Disco Collection. It contains one eye palette as well as one lip gloss. The box is very reflective so I wanna to try to show it to you without blinding you, but I don't think you're gonna be able to get a good view of this without a glare. The palette itself looks just like the box. And on the inside, we have four shades. It appears we have two glitters, one metallic and one matte, but luckily the darkest shade is the matte. This is what the box for the gloss looks like. I think this may be my favorite part of all of the packaging. And this is what the gloss looks like inside of the tube. With this being a first impressions, I haven't tested out any of the shades yet and I have no idea what kind of look I want to pull off. But before we get started, I want to give you swatches of these shadows as well as the gloss. And this is a close up view of all of the swatches here. Everything was swatched only one time on zero primer. This is on bare skin. And these shades left to right starting on the top row are all night long, which is a silver glitter over a black base. We have Dance With Me, which is a matte blue. We have Cocktail, which is a blue glitter. And we have DJ, which is a shimmery teal shade. The last and final swatch is Disco Fever. It's a clear gloss that appears to have some silver reflex in it, which makes it appear a little bit shinier to me. I am not the biggest fan of a basic clear gloss. I usually like something in it. And to me, this is beautiful. The fact that I can use that on any skin tone or under any liner, I am so excited to get started with that. As with every tutorial, I'll leave all tools and products used today in the description bar below. And after showing you all the swatches, it is easy to see that we are very limited with the things we can do with this palette simply because we only have one matte shade. I am someone who personally does not mind reaching for another palette to complete an entire eye look. But usually on a first impressions, I like to use just that palette alone to see exactly what I can achieve. And because I'm someone who's not against putting a shimmer in the crease, I think what we're going to do is start off using this shade here as a transition. I know it's rather dark for a shimmer, but I am someone who is just not a big fan of using glitters in the crease simply because I don't believe they'll blend the way I want them to. 
a matte or a shimmer shade, I don't really mind. So what I'm gonna do is start off with this shade here, DJ, and we're gonna use that as a transition shade, but we're gonna go in rather slowly because this is a darker shade. So I've gone ahead and taken the shade DJ on a large fluffy brush. This is gonna be my transition shade, and I'm here to let you know now, before we get started, I really like this new way of swatching. I know many times many people prefer to see live swatches, but I'm here to tell you, one, those are much harder to pull off, and two, I truly think my subscribers trust my word when I say, you know, I'm not wearing a primer or this is only one layer and things like that. So I don't think I'll have any issues with just doing pre-recorded swatches and just showing you all so it'll make it easier on me. And I'm here to tell you, that shade there just buffed and blended out really fast. You can truly look at it and tell that this is not a matte color because in person I can see the shine, especially the lower I get into my crease. But what I want to do is try to keep this brush low into the socket to get most of that pigmentation there. And then what we're going to do is just slowly lift your brush to diffuse the edges of that color. Baby, and as you can see, she is big and bold, honey. <laughs> but with an all blue palette, I know you didn't think we was going in with nothing soft. So I'll be right back. I'm going to do this on the other side. Baby, look at that. I'm telling you already, if we wasn't trying to do nothing else, we truly gonna grab their attention with this. Even if I did nothing else to my eye look, honey, people would be looking at me like, sis, what is going on? Just notice this one spot right here ain't blended the way I want it to be, honey, and what we ain't gonna do is just jump cut past that. Okay, so what I want to do now, just to ensure that our blend is beautiful, is I want to take a clean brush with absolutely no product on it, and I'm going to use this to diffuse the edges. That first brush did a really nice job, but I just want to make sure around the very ends of this look, we do it with just a tiny bit more blending. It's just to ensure we don't have any harsh edges. And because this is going to be over the top, I don't mind taking this all the way up to the brow. I just want to make sure that I don't have harsh lines. A, B, look at that. You can see the edges of this side compared to the edges of that side. So I'll be right back after I go ahead and diffuse this side. Okay, now that we've diffused the edges of that, it's time to go in and deepen up that crease even further. Now to deepen up the crease, we're going to go in with this matte blue shade, Dance With Me. And because I know Juvia's Place brings the pigment, I've loaded up my brush, but I tapped off any and all excess product because I know I can go back and build up if need be. And we're going to start on the lowest part of the crease. So we can get a true indication of what that color going to do before we start to build it up. Okay. Yeah, see? I feel more comfortable going in like this to deepen up that crease. And we're going to go in with one more layer after we blend this out evenly. Use that up and now I don't feel bad about going in with one more layer and you want to start off low so just in case you get a patchy area or anything like that it's easier to blend it out then you just slowly lift your brush up after you have opacity. This will help diffuse those edges and help those two different colors blend together to look as one. Yeah. 
Yep, and you can see how that crease on this side look way deeper than that side. So I'll be right back. We're going to jump ahead and I'm going to do this high. Okay, Heidi, and as you can see, this is a whole lot of blue going on. But we've managed to turn our crease from a metallic down to about a satin matte. It's not completely matte because we started off with a metallic base, but we got it as close as we possibly could. Now it's time to go ahead and cut our crease. And for today's look, we gotta use a glitter primer because we have two glitter shades to apply. I'm gonna make sure I load this up. And we are going to cut high, of course. Alright, now that we got that done, honey, I am ready to put these glitters on, but first we got to deepen up our outer V. We're going to take the same brush that we use for our crease shade, and we're going to just pack this right here onto that outer corner. Because we have this glitter base down, it should give us a little more pigmentation, and that color should show up a little bit darker. want to make sure we don't get no patchiness or no skip area, so we're going to go in with one more layer and just make sure that part is completely covered. Bam. Going to do that on the other side. Okay, I'm liking that now. Now it's time to put some of these glitters on. For the inner half of my lids, I'm going to go in with this shade here all night long. And for the outer half of my lids, I'm going to go in with this shade Cocktail. And we're just going to take this on a silicone applicator and we're going to start off trying to get this near the center of the eye. Okay. I'm telling you, in the pan, this looks a lot more silver. On the eye, you can actually see that black base that is on top of a little better. Because honestly, I didn't realize it was a black base until after I swatched it. And you can see the color coming up. But here on the eye, you can truly see it. Just want this little bitty patch right here covered. We want to make sure we leave plenty of space for the next shade. We're going to take it about there, then we're going to be right back after I do this on the other side. That went on extremely easily. Now it's time to do the outer half. And I just took this and flipped the silicone applicator over to get this out. I was not about to grab a whole second one. I'm just going to swipe this on. And just to be honest, this blue glitter is giving me a little more difficulty than the silver one. She is building. She is going on. But it's just taking a little more finessing with the blue glitter. I'm going to try to go in one last time to catch just one little piece right here. Right, but she's on now and she's beautiful. It looks to me like the silver glitter has larger chunks to it, which is why it's a little more reflective. But we got it on now. We'll be right back after we do the other side. Okay, I am liking what we have so far. And I'm excited to see what this is going to look like when we get through. So I'm going to cut away, finish off the face, and I'll be back to show you how we'll finish off the eyes and the lips. Honey, we're back and we're almost complete. 
I want to show you some of the things I used off camera to help finish off this look. For blush, I went in with the Juvia's Place Single Blush in the shade Bella. This shade is a little dark for me, but because I absolutely love the other single shade they have, Serafina, it's one of my absolute favorite blushes of all time. I wanted to go ahead and make sure I put that to the side and use this color because this is a shade, although I bought at the same time, I rarely get to use. So I wanted to switch things up today and go ahead and give this a try. And although I like it, it's just not quite as peachy and quite as glowy as Serafina, but this is still a wonderful blush for darker complexions. For highlighter, I'm wearing the Natasha Denona Super Glow in the shade 2. I absolutely have been loving this highlighter. I didn't use it when I first got it, but I've been using it all week and I cannot put it down. For eyeliner, you know I'm trying my favorite brand, the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Eye Pencil. This is a blue one in the shade Chaos, and I've never actually tried this one. Usually when I do a blue look, I'll just go in with a black liner, but I wanted to go ahead and try this one simply because this is my favorite brand for eyeliners. And the thing I can honestly say is, I've come to realize just blue in general is a difficult color to do. I've, I've always known that blue eyeshadow was difficult, but it seems like no matter what you pick in blue, the formula is just never quite as good as it is with a brown or a black. Whether that be eyeshadow, whether that be eyeliners or things like that, the final color I get with this blue eyeliner is beautiful. It is beautiful there when you look at it, but I had to go in with like two or three layers because it starts off sheer, but it is buildable. And for me, I'm glad I have it. It's just, I wish blue was just not so difficult to work with. And for lip liners, I've been testing out these two all week as well. These are the Luxe Liners from Juvia's Place. The lighter color is so rare. The darker color is Cola. And whenever I just want a nice nude look, I go with the lighter one. Whenever I want something more bold or something with a stronger ombre, I'll go in with the darker color. Today, I started off with the lighter color, So Rare, and realized it's just not quite as pigmented as I wanted it to. So I went back in with Cola. So I have both of them on the lips at the same time. It's just to me, I've been saying for the longest, I wish they would come out with a brown shade in between these two. Well, because they currently don't, I see myself just always using both of these at the same time because using one just doesn't quite get it for me. So I have both of these on the lips, blended it out, and now we're ready for lip gloss. But before that, I want to finish off the eyes. Because we have so much going on on the lids, I don't want to leave my lower lash line bare. So I'm going to go in with this shade DJ with the pencil brush and buff that out first. And now that I have my brush loaded, we're going to start on the outer half and buff that in. Most times I will go in directly with the darkest color and then buff that out with the lighter color. But today we have a shimmer and because I'm not 100% on how that's going to buff out on the lower lash line, I'd rather go in first, make sure things are nice and diffused. And then we can always just take a push liner brush and go in later. The thing is, if you go in with the push liner brush first, you get a softer color because you're diffusing that dark line. But because we want plenty of drama today, we're going to go in with the transition shade and then use our push liner brush to give a stronger color. Bam! And you can see that's a little bit lighter than the top, but we still going to make that a little bit darker after we come back and finish the other eye. Now I'm going to take this matte blue shade, dance with me, and use that with a push liner brush. And I want to use the tiniest brush I have because I don't want to risk smudging this color. And we're going to just use this and press it as close to the lashes as I can possibly get it. And because we're not going to diffuse this line out, it's going to come out really, really dark. Anytime you're doing this step last, I recommend going in small sections. Just for a brown, I wouldn't mind just straight swiping. But we can't risk getting this dark blue in the wrong area, honey. And because this eyeliner is such a bright, bold, and vivid blue, 
putting this color underneath it helps that color shine a little bit more. See this side without it, this side with it. Be right back after we finish off this side. Okay, look at the glam we got going on here, honey. This is over the top dramatic. We've got one last step for the eyes and that's highlighting our brow bone and our inner corners. And because there are no shades in this palette that are light enough to use as a highlighter, I decided to go into a highlighter palette. This is full of colors that I deep hide from other palettes. And the shade I wanna use is this one here. This shade is Sapphire from the Alchemist palette by KVD Vegan Beauty. And what I want to do first is highlight my inner corners because that's where we're gonna get the strongest point of light. And we just wanna make sure that sits right there. And I'm gonna lift this up rather high because this is also like a transformer shade and it's gonna make sure any blue we put underneath it is gonna really shine. Okay, you see how that looks like right there with it? And this side without. Honey, let's go ahead and make them twins. I am telling you, honey, no matter what part of my eye look I do, it just always seems like that inner corner highlight is my favorite part of the look. Like, baby, look at that. And trust me, most days I usually care about having a very subtle brow bone highlight. But because we're going in with a color like blue today, honey, I ain't even worried about all of that. I just want to get this. So loud, so beaming that it screams from across the room. And I'm trying to clean off as much of my brush by putting all this product down now. And we're gonna take just what's left and sweep it right underneath here. And you can see just how quickly that blue shadow came through. So I'm glad I cleaned off as much as I did. Because otherwise, this color would be a lot stronger than it is. Alrighty, and I think that is it for the eyes. So now it's time to put on our gloss. I am not gonna lie to you all. I really, really wanted to go in with the blue lip liner, but I had to think about it. The last time I did a blue look, it was with the Wahala 2 palette, and I did a blue eye as well as a blue lip. So I figured I didn't want things to be that similar using the same brands. So today I'm gonna let the eyes speak out and we're gonna just do a nice glossy wet lip. And I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this on from the center first because with this being a clear gloss, it'll be so much easier for it to show if this wand gets dirty and I cannot stand a dirty lip wand. It just does something to me and no, we're not going through that today. So I have this first layer on. I'm gonna blend that out. And simply because I have big lips and lips are my favorite part of the body, we're going to go in and put a second layer right near the tanner. Mm -hmm. Yes, honey, that's what I'm talking about. Nice and shiny and glossy. Look at that. You know I'm telling this. Time to set everything and you all know the routine. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter so things last all day. Cheap fan, expensive breeze, good times. Gonna give this a few more seconds to dry and I'll be back to give you all my final thoughts. And this is the final look. I wanna go ahead, give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And of course, honey, it's Juvia's place. What did you think was going to happen? The look is fabulous. I'm not surprised, and I don't think you all are either. But of course, because most products aren't perfect, this product does have its flaws. 
I think the first and most obvious con that most people are going to see with this palette is the fact that there is only one matte. Most people who use eyeshadows tend to prefer at least two. One as a transition, one for the crease. I'm someone who, because I have hooded eyes, I don't mind having just that one matte shade simply because I know if need be, I can put it in the crease first, then use a larger brush to diffuse and blend that up and out. But also, because I'm someone who doesn't mind using a shimmer in the crease, I could see that I could use this shade here and then use this one to deepen it up. Most people may not feel comfortable with that, so this may be a reason why they would skip this palette. Another reason is because many people, even if they like shimmer colors, they may not be a big fan of glitters. And with this palette having two different glitters here, that can automatically be a no-go for some people. Once again, I'm someone who likes the glam. I like dark colors, I like jewel tone colors, and I love sparkly shimmers. The more shine, the more sparkle it has, the more comfortable I am with it. So glitters are right up my alley. If you're someone who doesn't like them or don't feel comfortable with them, more than likely this won't be the palette for you considering half the shades are glitter. With all that being said, all of these shades perform beautifully. I think if I just generally had to say which one shadow Torrance would you say is the best shadow in the palette, me personally, I would go with this shimmer shade simply because it goes on the lid very beautifully. As you saw in the swatch, it was extremely pigmented. And when I took it and dragged it across the skin, you can see it had the most even opacity from the beginning to the end. The shade to me that gave me the absolute most issues but still went on beautifully was this shade here. I generally thought the silver one would be the worst one simply because it had the largest chunks to it, but it actually blended and built up a lot easier than this blue shade. But when it comes to primary shades, which are your yellows, your reds, and your blues, those generally are the hardest to formulate and to use. To me, I found in my personal experience, blue is the hardest color in the rainbow to work with. I even find it harder to work with than a matte black. But to me, as you can see, things went on. They're beautiful, they blended out. But this is a palette for the person who really loves blues, who really loves glitters, or who really loves a glam look. There's just nothing neutral you're gonna get from this palette. If you want something for your everyday routine, she's not for you. But let's say if you're someone who has a bunch of neutrals, but you want that pop of blue effect, she's perfect to sit right on the side of a neutral palette. You could take, blend into your crease, build up your neutral shades, and if you just want to deepen up the crease or your outer V with this matte blue, you have it. You have sparkly shades that you can build up on top of other shadows or use as the shadow itself. But to me, I truly would recommend this palette. But once again, it's for those who want the most, those who want the glam, those who want the colors. If you're someone who wants neutrals, stay away from her. Now with this little bad baby here, this gloss, I'm telling you, I know with that last collection, I kept saying that sophisticated gloss would probably be my favorite. The thing is, when I was freelancing, nine times out of 10, I only had two glosses with me. One was Fenty Glow by Rihanna. The other was a clear gloss by MAC. And the reason why clear glosses were always so beautiful is because no matter what I put underneath it, it did not change the color. The fact that I went in with just a brown lip liner and put this on here means I can still see my natural lip tone coming through. But let's say I were to go in with a blue lip liner, a purple one, or anything like that. I know I can put this on top and still get my color. And the fact that this is just not a plain clear gloss. It actually has some small reflex in it. And to me, it helps it shine that much more, which I absolutely love. I'm sitting here doing like that. There is no feel or texture in this gloss. Like many times with sparkly glosses, you can rub your lips together and you can feel the glitter in there. Not with this one. I'm telling you, Disco Fever, Juvia's Place, y'all need to make this permanent. I know y'all have a permanent clear gloss, but y'all need this one in y'all line. 
Somebody need to talk to Fumi. Somebody need to find out exactly what's going on because we need this added to the roster. But I hope you actually did enjoy this tutorial. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment down below if you managed to grab this collection before it sold out. I did check online and as of right now, the entire collection is sold out. But hopefully, as with many other Juvia's Place collections, they do do a restock and they bring it to Ulta. I personally pick my items up from the Juvia's Place website, but anytime I can get them from Ulta, it's even easier because you have the option of the return policy as well as using the coupon right there on the spot. I always see them having the $3.50 off coupon, but many times you can catch it with the $5 off coupon, which can make it even more affordable. But I recommend both pieces to this collection. If I could only choose one, me personally, I would say go for the gloss simply because they don't have a gloss like this quite in their range. And to me, any makeup lover can use this. Whether you like neutrals or colorful looks, this is going to go with it. If you're someone who either A, loves blues or wants to have a complimentary palette, I say pick this up. And even if you're not, go ahead and grab it anyway just to support Fumi because, honey, nobody supports Juvia's Place the way Fumi does. She's the one who helped get me up on the brand, and I don't care. Any and every time she does anything with the brand, you all can expect to see it on my channel. And with that being all, once again, I hope you all truly did enjoy this tutorial. Before you leave, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you already have, I'd like to say thank you. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my future uploads. But I do need to be heading off to work right now. So I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed. And until next time, goodbye, YouTube.